Hey, this is Bradley Will and Matt Wolf back with another traffic module. Matt, you ready to show people on how to get some traffic? Let's do this. Yeah, so in our last video, we talked about some of our favorite traffic uh, methods. Um, and in this video, we're going to hope to cover pretty much everything else we can possibly think of as far as traffic goes. So uh, this may be a longer module. Not sure how long it's going to turn out, but we're going we're gonna to try to cover a lot of different traffic strategies in this call. Yeah, we're going to have a conversation about what's really our strategy because it doesn't benefit you at all to talk about the things that we're not actually using mm -hmm. uh, in our business. But we can give you some suggestions because everybody's business is different. And what we have here on the screen is a friend of ours, a uh, friend of Matt's. She's a friend of yours, right, Matt? Yeah, Kim Roach, yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> 23 steps to 100,000 visitors. And why recreate the wheel? But this is just a good guide to look at uh, some of the different ways step by step to uh, get a lot of traffic to your site. Um, and it's all based upon uh, really what your model is. And I think before we get into this, Matt, um, do you want to explain uh, again, just do a little quick recap on what our traffic strategy is? Okay, so our traffic strategy, we've got we've got several little components, but there's there's definitely a few traffic sources that send us the majority of the traffic. Our number one biggest traffic source is our mailing list. Now we've gone over this over and over again. The mailing list is you've, you've got to be building that mailing list with your blog because once you build that list, you can get traffic back to your site whenever you want. So that is our number one biggest traffic source is our list that we already created. So make sure you're building a list. Uh, number two biggest traffic source is Facebook. Um, both uh, sharing stuff on social media and through paid ads. Uh, we did a webinar with, uh, we did some training with, with Kurt Malley not too long ago. That's inside of the, the Learn to Blog dashboard um, that, that goes into the paid side of things. And in our last video, we talked about how we use Facebook as a free method, I believe. So we've got Facebook and uh, our next biggest traffic source would be affiliates. We actually have affiliates promoting to our site and generating quite a bit of traffic for us. So I'd say those are our top three right now. Um, we do get some some search engine traffic from Google, uh, but that's just kind of a byproduct of everything else we're doing. We're actually, we put no effort into SEO whatsoever. We haven't gone out there and made backlinks. We haven't put any focus on SEO. It's just, that's the byproduct of everything else we've been doing. All, once you start getting a lot of traffic to your site, Google thinks you're an authority, they start to rank your site better. So we do get traffic from Google because of that, but not because of any sort of SEO efforts that we've we've made. So uh, the, yeah. those are our main traffic strategies. Um, and we're going to dive into a couple of those right now. And then we're also going to talk about yeah. some uh, lesser known traffic strategies that, that get us little trickles of traffic here and there. I think the most important mindset, Matt, and you, you hit it on what we're doing is is to uh, keep everything like um, make yourself known everywhere. So if you have business cards, you know, put your website, your blog, or your offer page on your business card, in your email signatures, um, you know, uh, marketing materials, put it on the back of your car. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of this is to uh, be everywhere and be seen. And we're going to give you some online, uh, you know, strategies and some different places that you can, you know, post and share your content to drive some more traffic. But uh, keep in mind, everybody's business model is a little bit different. So some of these may or may not apply to you. And, um, you know, you can use this uh, stuff uh, that we're going to be talking about online, you can also think of different creative ways to do it offline. Um, you, know, uh, you know, newspaper ads or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you can think of, of you know, driving, you know, traffic, uh, different ways to drive traffic to your site. Uh, you know, these are, you know, different things and we're probably not even going to cover all of it. So, um, I'd like to look at this this uh, this guide really quickly because there were some cool things in there that we do use and have used in the in the past. But it all starts with creating epic, great content, uh, content that is shareable and people want to share in their social networks. Matt mentioned we get a lot of traffic from Facebook. The reason we get a lot of traffic from Facebook is because if we write a great article, we make it really easy for people to share. Then they'll click the like button, they'll click the share button, they'll click like the stumble upon button. I used to see a lot of traffic from StumbleUpon, uh, LinkedIn share, Twitter share, um, and they'll share it in their social network. So it's it's got to be really good content, but then it's got to also be you know make it easy for them to share in their social network so that content can spread. So one one thing I'd like to add here is that um, 
you know, we, we experiment with a ton of different traffic strategies. We're, we're constantly uh, testing different stuff that we hear about. We're, we're, we're making up our own ideas for traffic and, and testing those out. You know, we're, 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 we're trying to work out JV deals with people where they mention our site in the back end of their site. And we're, we're constantly just trying different things all the time, just figuring out new ways to, to, to get traffic to our site. Um, but, but I mean, Bradley hit it on the head. We're just, the, the main goal is to be everywhere. You know, your, your address and your signature, your address on your business cards. If you want to put your address, your, your website address on the, the back of your car, you know, all that kind of stuff is going to get you little extra bits of traffic that over time are going to add up. You know, you can, you compound all these different traffic strategies and maybe one source over here is getting you 10 visitors a day. One source over here is getting you 15 visitors a month. One source over here is getting you 20 visitors a month. Next thing you know, you've got all these different traffic sources trickling in, but you're getting a couple hundred visitors a day. Yeah, exactly. And as Matt's saying is, um, you know, talking about here, here's another article and we're going to link to these two articles, but um, when we create articles, we like to syndicate the content and uh, this is an article, 500 places to syndicate your content. Uh, Matt, can you talk about this really quickly on, on the importance of uh, syndication? Yeah, well, basically, when we talk about syndication, we talk about uh, places that you can guest post and, pay, and places that you can actually uh, add your article to to get links back to your site. Um, in this article, that's what they're referring to as syndication. So uh, what, what this is is a giant list that we're going to link to of 500 different places where you can actually post your articles to and link back to your website. So some of these examples are, are bigger name blogs that allow guest posts. Some of these examples are, you know, um, easy type sites that allow you to just post articles for article marketing. Um, they're sites that because they're highly ranked themselves, because they're high authority sites, uh, just by posting on these sites, your posts on these sites will probably rank in Google pretty well. So you're leveraging these sites authority to get traffic back to your site is essentially what you're doing. You go to the, one of these big blogs, one of these big article marketing sites, you post on it. Chances are, if your blog is not very well known yet, this article marketing site is going to rank your post above your own blog. But of course you're going to get traffic to the post. People are going to read it. It's going to be amazing content and they're going to want to find out more from you and they're going to click back to your blog. That's kind of the idea behind this syndication, uh, blog com or blog guest posting article marketing kind of idea so guest posting and, and writing articles and and basically just getting content all over the web on other people's assets you're basically when we talk about the publisher model we talk about you being the platform that people come and post their content on well what you're doing when you're doing this syndication is you're going and leveraging other people's platform creating your content on other people's platform and leveraging their platform to get traffic back to your site. So that's that's kind of the big idea behind that syndication, blog uh, blog guest posting, uh, article marketing kind of idea, is go out, write great content for other people, and in the end of your article, you'll link back to your site so people can read more and uh, it'll generate traffic and link juice back to your site for SEO purposes and um, you know all sorts of benefits for, uh, for, for doing that, that syndication and guest blogging kind of idea. Yeah, and I want to go you know, to hop back to this list, Matt, because this is kind of a uh, you know, perfect transition into something that uh, we've used, uh, and I know I've used quite extensively, is having and building a blogging alliance, which really uh, what that is is a small group of people, and you know, uh, they're like-minded, you know, kind of in the same place in business or you know in in blogging, and have. You know, similar, you know, but not maybe overlapping uh, topics that they talk about, and it's something that you know you can, you know, share each other's posts, comment on other each other's articles, you know, create an interaction, like and share each other's posts, uh, swap guest posts on each other's sites. Uh, so having a blogging alliance is a great thing. You know, a small group of people where you can kickstart your traffic and the shares in the comments you know right from the start when you publish a new article so it's uh, kind of uh, related to the syndication idea and you know you guys can promote each other uh, as affiliates as you know you know 
just to help each other out, however you want to do it. But building a, a blogging alliance where you can, you know, talk, communicate on Skype or Facebook. Maybe you have a private Facebook group um, is a, a great place to not only uh, you know get traffic and, and uh, get posts written as a guest on your on your uh, blog, but to also help you grow. Uh, as a blogger and share ideas and and you know continually uh, you know give each other feedback. So um, another a couple ideas, Matt, uh, and I know you used these. I really love this as far as uh, traffic ideas, and this may or may not relate to some of you, but these next couple of you know converting it's it's the idea of repurposing your content. Mm -hmm. And Matt has done this extremely well. Um, convert your article into to a PowerPoint and submit it to SlideShare. Um, there's other uh, you know document sharing sites out there. So you know SlideShare, you can post like PowerPoints and keynotes. Um, there's other sites out there where you can convert your article to a PDF. Uh, things like DocStock, Scribed. Um, uh, there's a list of them here on this on this site. These are the two main ones, Scribed and DocStock, where you can um, turn it into a PDF, and people can download for free your documents, and you can have a link back to it and get another. Uh, traffic stream. And but one nice this, thing about the, the documents, let me just add, is when sure. you do set it as a PDF, you save it as a PDF, you put the link back to your blog, you know, in the, the footer of your PDF, that sort of thing. What happens with these docs, these PDF files, is they get passed around, they get shared. If people like the content, they pass around the PDF, maybe they post it to their friends on Facebook, you know, those kinds of documents get passed around virally. And uh, when those get passed around, you get more traffic back to your site. Exactly. So, um, the PDF, uh, you, you know, you, you may want to alter your content so it's not a duplicate of you know what's on your blog, but just think of you know, there's some bloggers out there that what they've done is they've actually written best-selling books, and the whole idea of their you know best-selling books is they took a series of their articles and the content that they created and molded it and adapted it into an actual product, a physical product, which is a book. And so, you know, the stuff that you're creating, these articles, is not just going into the, you know, internet of this and, you know, you never get to use it again. You can, you know, take these ideas and maybe you can think about it in the future of, like, I'm writing this as a, you know, step-by-step -step process, as a piece-by-piece -piece process to writing my book or creating my product or, you know, you're doing the research now and getting out of the way. And that's a perfect segue into the next topic, which is, uh, something that Matt is, you know, one of the best to talk about is uh, getting traffic from Kindles and Amazon uh, eBooks, um, basically turning the product into a book, an eBook or a physical book. Matt, can you give some uh, strategies on how you've done that for yourself and published other authors in doing that? Sure. With um, with my main book, my WordPress Revealed book, what I did, and this is the exact strategy that I used to get my book published. I wrote a blog post and on this blog post I actually said what is your number one biggest question with WordPress I want to know what your biggest question with WordPress is please leave it in the comments I'll do my best to answer every single question right so I uh, mailed my list about it I mentioned this post on Facebook I, I kinda generated some traffic to this post to get people commenting on it and I generated a list of about hundred and fifty people giving me their biggest WordPress questions I took all of these questions put them into a Word document, and then went through this Word document and literally just one at a time answered the questions. Saved it as a, a ebook and put it into Kindle. And literally WordPress Revealed was written that way. I went back through and added, you know, an intro and a conclusion and kind of reworked it so it read more like a book instead of just a list of questions. But for the most part, that was my strategy to get my book written. And I managed to get that book written in a matter of a, a month just using that strategy and you know every night I went in and edited little bits of it and cleaned it up over time but um, I did that and then in my book I actually have links back to my website all over the place all over the place throughout the book um, if you want to see examples of this on video go back to my website I've got a link to this this exact uh, this process here so I would teach stuff in WordPress inside my book and then link people back to my site if they wanted to see it on video so that was sending traffic back to my site constantly. So people would buy the book, download it, read through it, 
come back to my site to get even deeper examples of what I was teaching in the book. And it was a great way to generate pretty much evergreen traffic back to my site. You were making money doing so. Can you talk anything about the numbers or you know the percentage of traffic uh, that you would get from your ebook? Uh, I'm not actually off the top of my head. I don't know the exact numbers of traffic that was coming in. Uh, I can tell you that it was building my mailing list at about 20 subscribers a day, and it's still wow. it's, it's slowed down a little bit since I've launched it. It's been about a year now since I've launched it. Uh, so it has slowed down a little, but it was adding about 20 people to my list every single day. And, uh, I was making sales on the book. I mean, the book is, a uh, if you buy the Kindle version, it's five bucks. If you buy the paperback, it's 10 bucks. So I was making a cut of every single one of those sales and it generated, it, it still to this day generates somewhere in the range of about $3,000 a month in sales from that book. That's great. That's great. So you're making money building subscribers and getting traffic and authority because you're becoming known as you know this best-selling author plus your book has been adopted by colleges mm -hmm. and so you know the point is not to you know build Matt it up because you know Matt's already awesome and doing great things the point is to get you thinking bigger outside of the box on different traffic strategies this may apply to you in your business and you can start thinking bigger like you know what's the goal that I'm working towards in publishing my blog Another great one is uh, podcasting and audio submissions. Uh, Matt, you want to uh, mention anything about uh, doing podcasting or submitting audios? I actually did run my own podcast for several uh, several months for business and blogs, and um, it, it generated some good traffic. I was actually really shocked at how many people would actually listen to my podcast. I was getting, uh, you know, some results from. Uh, I was able to track the statistics from the podcast. And I was always shocked that every time I put out an episode, I'd have like 10,000, 15,000 downloads from an episode. And it just shocked me that that many people were listening to it. And what I'm you can do shocked. with a podcast is, is you mention your blog post. You, you, link, you essentially link back to your blog inside of your audio. So I might mention something about a blog post I wrote recently. And then in my podcast, say, if you want to find out more about that blog post, go to businessandblogs.com, link back to my, my blog. And... Um, you know, people would listen to the, the episode and, and go back to my go back to my blog. And another thing you can do with podcasting as well, coming back to the repurposing and that PDF thing, is I usually like to get my podcast transcribed and get the text from those podcasts. You take those texts, you turn them into PDFs, you've got an instant ebook right there from, from one of your podcast episodes. And you can return it back right into a blog post. Exactly. As well. Mm -hmm. Make a blog post out of the podcasting because it's a lot easier some, for sometimes for people to talk and have a conversation rather than getting down and staring at a blank sheet of paper and the fear of like, what do I write? And if you, so for if those you listen of you to, um, to, to Pat Flynn's uh, interview that we did with Pat, um, he, he mentioned that Smart Passive Income, his, his main blog, I think something like 60% of the people, he polled his people and something like 60% of the people found out about his blog because of his podcast, not the other way around. Yes, definitely. Um, podcasting will get the traffic, build the lead list, and again, the authority of you know becoming known into a wider audience. The cool thing about podcasting is that you can get seen by a lot of people that normally would not find you, you know, by searching online, uh, because it's you know different, you know, type of people looking. You know, the people that have you know the iPhones. Okay, so the last thing um, on this list that I'd like to talk with you about, Matt, um, you know, these are things that we're, these are the, th the three things that we're doing that we mentioned at the beginning, which is building an affiliate army that are promoting our stuff, um, Facebook advertisements, we do a lot of Facebook advertisements, so uh, when we do Facebook ads, we'll do like a sponsored story or a sponsored link. And uh, you know, do like a, a simple promo for that, so it shows up in the newsfeed from our Learn to Blog fan page. We have a, uh, a a whole course on Facebook ads that we can link to for you if you want to learn more about Facebook ads, taught by our Facebook ad instructor. And build a bigger email list, which is the whole end game of this strategy. Because if you're getting traffic once, you're getting them to your site. You need to capture that email. Um, you need to capture that email so that you can bring them back to your site. 
and you're not constantly like when I first started I never collected an email list so it was a constant struggle each time to you know try to find new traffic it's easier to get somebody that's already said I like your site to come back rather than trying to convince somebody new that you're this awesome person in the niche so build the email list and when you're building your email list you want to keep in mind and track and manage your conversions so you want to know like how many people come to the site versus uh, what percentage of them that are opting into your list because the more you keep that in mind and think about what the conversion rate is the more you can uh, know on how you how much you can improve that so um, let's say for example one percent of your traffic that's coming to your site is opting into your list um, you know if you you know know that there's ways that you can improve and you've been tracking it if you can get that you know keep the same amount of traffic but uh, get that up to a two percent opt-in rate you've literally doubled your conversions uh, of email addresses that are coming in so it's something that you always want to just not throw something in the sidebar it's something that you want to track and manage and continually test new copy new offers and just new ideas to get people on and committed to joining your list anything you want to add on that Matt yeah, I think I think you covered it. I mean, test test everything. Different blogs, different niches respond to different things. So I mean, some some blogs will respond to having an opt-in in this the sidebar. Some need a little bit more of a push. Some need that that pop-up right in front of their face to to get you to get that opt-in. Um, I would just test a lot of different things uh, until you see something that's converting. And I think this this post actually discusses that. Um, she's showing some statistics here of of um, you know what sort of pop-ups uh, work and, and which ones don't so very interesting you can actually see she mentions that uh, social media examiner uh, 60 to 70 percent of their 205,000 subscribers came from a pop-up on their blog so test everything build the list make that a number one priority uh, because once you have that list then you've got the power to send the traffic back to your site whenever you want yes and as Matt said if you look here in the article you can see that they've created and here's what we do is we create a sep a separate uh, opt-in form for each uh, placement of that form on the site because then you could track just like in this image here where people are opting in to so you can see header box footer bar welcome gate a welcome gate what that is is a, uh, a, a page that people land on if they go to their site for the first time so it's like Hey, you know, you've reached whatever so and so blog. You know, click here or submit your email here to get all of our latest updates. And then once they close that welcome gate or click submit, it will go on to the blog content. So, um, as far as our strategy, that's uh, the primary uh, focus of our strategy. I want to just, you know, Matt, before we hop off and uh, end the traffic module, I want to talk about some other things like some up and coming things mm -hmm. and some things that have worked in the past for us uh, because it's not, you know, necessarily, we don't put a lot of effort into these things, but uh, we do see traffic, one, and two, we have friends that are absolutely crushing it with these things right now. And so it would be uh, kind of like a little uh, side road for you guys to you know, take off and investigate if you want to. And one of those things, actually uh, three of those things for us, uh, we get traffic from YouTube. So if you're a video stud or you want to you know, put some of your you know, PowerPoints or record some videos that you embed into your blog, YouTube is a phenomenal traffic source. And we've talked about James Wedmore and how he uses YouTube in uh, his you know video marketing and his blog posts. So YouTube is a great traffic source. Go to um, youtube.com slash learn to blog real quick. Okay. This is actually our YouTube channel. We need to we need to go through and through and do some updating. But you can see what we do is we actually create little videos, little mini training videos. If you click into one of the videos and just pause it real quick. We'll actually create a little mini uh, training video here. And then you can see in our description below the video, we'll put our link back to our blog. And what happens is people watch the video, they get interested, and they'll uh, they'll click on a link back to the blog. Yeah, YouTube videos are great because they are working for you. Uh, they're working for you, like ongoingly. So you do it once, you don't have to do much optimization, and people will be constantly searching for it. So YouTube is a phenomenal, phenomenal traffic source. 
um, my uh, you know James, our friend James, is James Webmore is getting the majority of his traffic coming from his YouTube videos. So um, great place if you're confident with your video. Uh, really, really briefly, I'm not going to talk much about it, but LinkedIn groups. Uh, I've mentioned it before. You can share your articles inside of your LinkedIn groups and your Facebook groups. So something also to investigate if you're on LinkedIn and if there's some uh, groups that are related to your niche. Uh, you know, obviously sharing on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, but this is one last little gold mine um, that what we've realized is that we didn't even know, but we were getting a lot. Of, we don't really use Pinterest at all. And I don't even know if we have an account for Pinterest. No, I, the blog itself doesn't account. have an account. I mean, we both have personal accounts, but even our personal accounts, I, I rarely use mine. I don't know if you use yours or not. Uh -huh, but it, really. it, the, the funny thing is, we were looking at our Google Analytics earlier today to just to uh, track some statistics and see where our traffic was coming from. And we were getting a pretty healthy amount of traffic coming in from Pinterest, and we didn't even realize it. So this is something that we're starting to dive more into, and we're trying to figure out how traffic is coming in from Pinterest, because it's not a strategy we've put a lot of focus on. Yeah, and if you have uh, anything, you know, where you're, you have images and, you know, like, um, j you just look at some of the stuff that's on here, you know, fashion, it's phenomenal for Pinterest, wedding stuff, uh, hobbies, decorating, um, fitness, uh, you know, just things that are very image heavy. Hmm. Pinterest will be a phenomenal traffic source for you uh, because what people do is they go here and look for ideas and you know just little things and they make their own pin boards. Uh, we're not going to talk anything about Pinterest because we're not the people, but a friend of ours is the number one expert when it comes to Pinterest and getting traffic, and that's Melanie Duncan. And we'll put a link because she has a course called uh, I think it's the Power of Pinning, and it goes into um, how to you know get traffic and make sales from Pinterest and that would be a great side route for you to take a side course for you to take if uh, you know you're you know uh, uh, you know plan to use a lot of images in your site and in your posts and you know like oh, it could be of anything products it could be infographics it could be recipes it could be you know top 10 lists it could be quotes you see here's infographic quotes um, you know, it could be literally anything. Videos. Um, people can pin your videos in your YouTube videos. Um, it's just truly amazing on how the site works. And the funny thing is, is uh, I, I heard a stat, and I don't know if it's completely accurate, but Pinterest actually sends more traffic to blogs than uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter do. So uh, there's something there. There's something that you want to investigate, and we'll put a link to uh, Melanie so you can find uh, more training on Pinterest uh, if you decide to go that route. So that sums up everything for our traffic module. Matt, anything you want to add to any of this and uh, put some last insight on anything? Uh, one thing I think maybe it would be worth discussing just real quickly before we close this out is um, jumping back to affiliates because we didn't say affiliates was kind of one of our top three. And I, I, I feel like maybe um, we can talk a little bit about ideas on how to actually get some affiliates. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe we can just yeah. jump in real quickly and say, here's here's a few methods to, to find some affiliates and to get affiliates wanting to promote you. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll jump in and, and start it off. One way to, to get affiliates to notice you, first of all, is to, in the beginning, be an affiliate of products that you recommend. So if there's a product out there that's in your niche that you would recommend, you can actually go promote that product on your blog and that's going to help get the attention of that specific affiliate and hopefully they'll want to reciprocate at some point but if it will help you get on that affiliate's radar um, we did talk about social media a little earlier on and getting on influencers radars that's kind of one of the ways that we like to um to to try to get affiliates try to get noticed and um kind of kind of our strategy with that is to build relationships. You know, we don't go out with the mindset of let's try to get everybody we can think of to be affiliates. We go out with the mindset of let's build relationships with people. Let's show them how cool our product is. And then they'll want to promote it without us having to, to push them to promote. I mean, wouldn't you agree with that as kind of the affiliate strategy? It's all about building relationships with people. 
Uh, yes, and I'll, I'll just uh, slightly hone in on the last thing that you said is uh, getting affiliates to promote your product is as simple as you spending the time and creating a great offer. If you do not have a great offer, don't ask affiliates to promote your stuff. Um, it's it's kind of like a responsibility that you have. Mm -hmm. So, if you're expecting, uh, you know, like affiliates, they're doing this not just to be generous, but they're doing it because they it's probably something that complements their business, and you know they would want to make money just as if you would want to make money promoting somebody's offer. So you want to make sure that you have a great product or great offer uh, that. It, you know, has testimonials and that people you know enjoy, and it's getting people's results. Number two, you want to make sure that it converts. Um, that the product, uh, you know, the traffic that they're going to send is proven to convert your sales copy, your sales video, your sales letter, whatever it may be. Your opt-in page converts uh, the the cold traffic or the warm traffic sent by the affiliates into leads and sales mm -hmm. and uh, you got to make it worth their while uh, you know so you, the typical affiliate uh, uh, commission for a uh, you know like an online digital product is something like 50% mm -hmm. uh, it could go up and down from there but mm -hmm. you know a 50% com uh, commission for an affiliate is um, something that's kind of like standard in the industry not that you have to hold to that but that's just to give you an idea of a starting point. Mm -hmm. So um, affiliate marketing is such a deep topic and I don't want to lead people uh, like, uh, you know, like just give them enough to like, you know, just to like think about it and then not know what to do from there. It really is um, a advanced, advanced strategy. Uh, not you promoting affiliate offers, but you recruiting affiliates on board and you have to be committed to creating a great product mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that your product is converting people into sales. Yeah, so so basically step one, create something that's an amazing product because nobody wants to promote crap. You know, everybody's got a list, they've got a reputation. If they promote a product that's crap, it's gonna hurt their list, it's gonna hurt their reputation, they're not willing to do it. So make a good product. Second, do whatever you have to do to make that product convert. You know optimize split test do whatever you need to do to make sure that the sales are coming through on that product and the conversion rates are constantly improving you improve conversion rates people are much more likely to want to promote because if it converts high they're going to see dollar signs in their eyes so make a great product make it convert and build relationships don't just go and send out emails um, blanket emails asking people to promote your product or telling them about your new product that's upcoming I get emails like that every single day. I know Bradley does too. We get emails with people just, you can tell they copied and pasted it into an email telling you about their latest product. I guarantee Bradley deletes every single one of those because I know I delete every single one of those. If I see a blanket email like that, it gets deleted. You need to build relationships if you want to get affiliates on board. Some ways to build relationships, interact with them on their blogs, leave comments, interact with them on their social media, um, uh, tweet at them, uh, comment on their Facebook posts, uh, get on their radar by doing that, by being social with them, go to networking events. I mean, Bradley and I, we're at events all the time, several a year. We're, we're, we're away from our city at events, meeting people, trying to find other people in our niches, talking to people that, uh, have products related to ours. We're constantly, constantly out there meeting people, networking, trying to build relationships with people. And I'm not talking about hollow relationships where, you know, we're just trying to, to get them to promote and that's our end goal. You know, we actually share ideas with them. We get them to share ideas with us and we go with the intention of, you know, making friends and building relationships and hopefully, you know, an affiliate promotion comes out of it in the long term, but that's not our main goal. So I think that kind of sums up our strategy to get affiliates. It's um it's not something that's that's real scientific. It's about having a good product that converts and building relationships with the people who are most likely to promote it. Yeah, on here, Matt, there's some ideas uh, you know to look for and to get affiliates. Uh, JV Zoo, you can see different products uh, that are you know being promoted. ClickBank Marketplace. Um, 
Uh, also, one thing is think outside of the box. You know, you can find some people that have um, built up email lists that they don't do anything with affiliate marketing. And you know, so the thing is, think outside the box on where to find these affiliates. They just need to have an email list, mm -hmm. and or not even an email list. I mean, they just you know they could have a fan page that is crushing it, and they don't even have an email list. Or manage a LinkedIn group. They could be the manager of a LinkedIn group. That's that's got manager some power too. LinkedIn group. That's thinking outside of the box, and like you know, as you think, a lot of these people don't have a lot of people pr approaching them on monetizing. Uh, these pages, LinkedIn groups, and if you have an offer that you know is something that is relevant to them, and there's nobody you know talking to them about monetizing and you know bringing a product out to them, um, could be a great place to look instead of uh, trying to fight in that bloody you know red pool of competition out there on the web. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get even more complex and, and think out of the box, this is kind of a, a higher end strategy that involves a little more risk, but you can actually guarantee stuff to affiliates. You can go to affiliates and say, hey, if you mail your list for me, I'm going to send you an iPad. I don't care how many sales you make, just mail your list. You could do stuff like that to get people to promote, and sometimes that incentive is big enough. Definitely, definitely. So that's our affiliate strategy um, and our traffic strategy, and... Uh, that's pretty much sums up what we're doing and, and what you can focus on in your business to, you know, uh, the most effective ways to get traffic to your site and to your offers. And uh, that sums up the course. So we're going to go ahead and, and hop over to our conclusion video and give you a full out summary of what you learned in this con uh, uh, entire uh, course as far as all the modules that we talked about.